you can't cast a shadow without the sun. You know what I mean? And, and it's, it, it goes goes the other way. You can't you can't be truly happy unless you're truly sad, and you can't really. And you're only truly sad if you're scared of losing something or you're scared. You know what I mean? So it, it's 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 a, a, a vital emotion. I wouldn't hold my breath if I was you, 'cause I forget, but I'll never forgive you. Don't you know? Don't you know? True friends stab you in the front. We think nowadays that we can try and block out and we can try and like ignore and stuff with, uh, I guess like technology and like always being on your phone and texting and internet. You can always like, in in a sense, you never have to be alone, but you are alone and you have to. Sometimes you have to just sit and let your thoughts take over and process and, you know, get through it and stuff. And um, I think sometimes people think the negative emotions and sadness is something that shouldn't be in our lives. When I think it's a really important ex like experience and emotion. And um, I think there's some things you have to come to terms with in your life. There's some things you, about yourself that you have to accept and you can't change. Um, and I think a lot of people beat themselves up and stuff. And that I think people want to change things about themselves that they can't. And, and that's what it were for me. For me, I had to accept that parts parts of me were who I am. And that's that's just that. Um, so, it's, yeah, it's about celebrating, like, the negative aspects of our lives and ne ne negative emotions and you can't really ignore stuff like that it just gets worse and worse and bigger and bigger so th yeah the whole album's just about kind of like trying to see the bright side of like the dark side sort of thing it's got to get dark before it gets light and it's got to get it's got to get to its utter worst and to the point of almost no return to actually make you go right i, I need i, I want to fight for this and i want to you know i want to show i want to show myself and others that I'm not going to let it, you know, conquer me and stuff like that. That and kind I, of thing can either like make you or break you, can't exactly, you? And if, yeah. and if and if you let it, if you if you let it break you, then you then you're one of those people that never makes it out. And if you use it to make you, then you'll come back. You know what I mean? You, you can come back on top. I think it can, it, it can make you a much stronger person. Yeah, I think it makes it all about more special how well we're doing now. To, because I look back on where we were and I like I didn't even think we'd be writing another record or you know continuing. So it's just, I think it does make you stronger and it does make you appreciate stuff more. And it does, yeah, it, it definitely makes you see things a lot clearer as well when you come out the other side. When I first uh, met the band and that was kind of when, when Ollie was, was pretty much starting fresh. So my experience, I guess, has been from from that point onwards so from the point of view of the last album was all was kind of a bit more looking backwards i guess for you at least and just kind of like dealing with what i suppose it was what you'd just been through and then this one this one i suppose is a bit more like well how do you deal with life when when you can't rely on other stuff i think it's like you see who your true friends are when you go through something like that you you realize you don't have a lot of con lot in common with a lot of people and you realize what's important in your life as well um so yeah like jordan said he came into like a good time and he was almost a vibe for me at that time in, in terms of like someone to really get into writing music with and someone who was really up for like doing something new and you know grinding to the bone so um it was it, the timing was odd because it felt like it felt like a good time a good time for it to happen didn't it really it was just coincidence that Ollie was in a place where he obviously just wanted to focus fully on something compl completely on music rather than anything else because he just got himself sorted so then it was like perfect time for us to get into writing the album looking back I guess it's different now isn't it you can see not the funny side but there's a, it's, just a different it's just a different part of your life in a different phase and it's just yeah there's a lot of obviously a lot of memories and a lot of stuff that the band's been through and it wasn't all bad was it obviously there's a lot of funny stories as well but we're in a different we're in a different place now. It's funny how things work out. Such a bitter irony. Like a kick right to the teeth. I guess Sem Paternal talks a lot about like my drug addiction and, and how it was going through that and overcoming it. I guess this one's all about the stuff that I that I guess the steps I put in placed into my life to like become a happy person and you know, become a person who's confident and and happy with who I am and stuff. So each song's a bit of a, like a life lesson or a life realization and like realizing how to cope with stuff, you know. For instance, I guess like I struggled with like becoming 
someone that people knew, you know what I mean? I, I guess I, I didn't like the fact that people were saying all these horrible things about me because I didn't think they were true. It's, at the same time, I couldn't live up to the, I guess, standard that other people put me in, you know, people like almost worshipping me and, you know, seeing the Photoshop dude on the front of a cover and all that stuff. And I was, after a while, you start trying to be that guy, which you obviously you never can be, you know what I mean? So it was like... And that was, I think, a, a big thing was just like realizing that I'm neither, you know what I mean, and accepting that, knowing that I'll never be the superhero some people think I am, and 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 being and being comfortable with the fact that I'm not a bad person, and no matter what people say, it, it's not true, you know. I know what's true and and stuff like that. So it's yeah, it's all about, it's all like these little things I've I've like kind of had to figure out to make sure that I don't like fall off the wagon again, you know, and get get myself into a bad place. And as much as I. I'm gutted that I put like my friends and my family through all that and stuff. I mean, we wouldn't be where we are today if it weren't for that. You know what I mean? I guess that's what like songs like Throne Touch on. You know what I mean? If it, if I didn't have all this like emotional grief to like go through, and I wouldn't be a stronger person. I wouldn't have all to sing about. And I guess that's why people still connect with our music and stuff so much, despite what what like how we change in that. I think people really still know that it's like. A real journey, if, if you know what I mean. It's hard because I guess it, we, we listen to so much stuff when we're writing. When people ask what our influences are, we, we sort of give different bands every time. So the, the list is endless, really. Like Bjork, we probably listen to at some point, and Oasis, we definitely. We definitely are influenced by in a way, but it was I guess with them it's it's not necessarily the music, more like the the kind of swagger and attitude of of, of that band we quite like. I think the influences find us, like yeah. in, in in a way, like we always get people always tell us we sound like so this and this and this and we're like like nine inch nails or like something. We never heard these bands and it's kinda of the same way as like we weren't listening to Oasis and went, Oh, I wanna do something like that. We kinda of like like a happy song for instance, we we recording the vocals, we did some harmonies and we're like, this sounds a bit like Oasis, it's got that kind of, and then almost like we go with it a bit, you know what I mean? And like, same with Bjork, it's, I think it's like the the shock value of the electronics and the intensity of what she does, like, that you're not expecting. I think it's it's stuff we want, like in songs like Run and stuff, where it's just like, just huge soundscape -y kind of stuff that you're not really expecting and stuff. So it, we just kind of take in whatever we're listening to, you know what I mean? Like, we'll go to the, we'll go, when we're writing, we'll go to the cinema and stuff and watch films with great soundtracks and be like that would be cool something like that you know what i mean so it's like we're not really we don't really have a, co a collective like taste in music no we? not exactly i think when when, when we latch on something that we think oh this is something this is reminding us of something cool and it's usually something that we're into when we were younger to be honest with you then I, then we tend to go with it and we'll be like oh let's make let's make it feel like let's give it that kind of cocky vibe if that's what or if it's sounding a bit like euphoric and dancey we'll we'll go with that too and kind of like exaggerate that and use it so yeah it's a big big mishmash of different stuff i think so every single song's a bit like was having an attempt at a different kind of not genre but i guess just yeah i don't know kind of song yeah and then i think within that we'll then challenge ourselves to so like what within that one song there'll be like something something that sounds some, like something completely different and then another section that sounds like something completely different so we try and like we just throw loads of stuff yeah stuff see, see, what, see what sticks yeah. until it works There's always the pressure of like you're screwing it all up but you get that anyway even if you have a producer it doesn't matter if it's on them you're still left with a record that you're not happy with i say i felt marginally more pressure this time around but we, we were quite we strict pressure but at the same time we yeah. felt we were confident i think we were quite strict with ourselves early on weren't we to make sure that we weren't kidding ourselves into doing stuff that we weren't happy with and also we weren't um we tried to make sure that what went on there was was stuff that needed to be needed to be there for the benefit benefit of the song so rather than throwing everything at it and then having a producer come in and say you need to change this and remove this and remove this we never really let it get on there in the first place so we didn't we didn't we tried not to create a big job for ourselves we tried to make sure that we were really thoughtful of what was going into the song as we yeah. were writing it I we're think. not really a band that writes like 30 songs and then picks the best 10 with like the songs you hear on the album that's all we've got <laughs> you know what i mean then we just keep we're not we don't just make a song and go that's cool 
when they make another one in Glasgow, we're just like, we'll just keep demoing them and recording them. Like, yeah. we had everything demoed before we even went into the studio. And so, well, we got a clear vision, I think, of what not only we want the music to be, but how we want it to sound. And I think it's just a compromise working with anyone else. You could give us the biggest producer in the world and no disrespect to them or anyone else that we've worked with in the past, but it is, it's a comp once, once, if you can do it yourself and you know what you want, it is a compromise to work with someone else. At least this time around, it, if it was, yeah. Never say never. You can run, but you can never been a person that really thinks ahead anyway but at the same time I think after Count Your Blessings and like we realised that people really liked our band despite like not making a very good CD <laughs> and I think from Suicide Season we've always tried our very hardest what's cool about it looking back is not only like the progression musically but how you can really see where we were at in life you know it's like Suicide Season you can see that we were having fun and partying you can see that there is a hell is the flip side of that and then I like the little story that it gives, even though the music's so vastly different and stuff. Before that, it was nothing more than playing shows and having fun, you know what I mean? And then we just realised that people actually liked our band and we had a real chance to do something with it. So we, we've always pushed ourselves as hard as we can. So I don't think we ever saw it going this far, but I mean, it's, it's what we strive to do, you know what I mean? And now you know, now you know. We we tried. To, I mean, we, we there were so many different influences on that album. We we tried to do stuff like streets. I remember it was like one of the things we were listening to at the time. And what else? There's so many different random. So we have like certain songs where we like really want to emulate them, don't we? Yeah. Like stuff like I mean, I think everyone wants to write like a a song to, you know, by Blur. I think everyone wants that, and that's like so we're like that was happy song, and then like, we'll just do a poor man's attempt at these songs. Yeah, what you need like. All right, let's go for a Foo Fighters esque thing, but obviously we want to make it have that kind of feel, but do the best version we can of it. So every single song's a bit like was having an attempt at a different kind of not genre, but I guess just yeah. I don't know kind of song. 